Hi, um, I'm going to be, my name is Tal, and I'm going to be speaking about using analytics to stop fraud by understanding user behavior. A little bit about me. I am a senior analyst on the payment risk team. I have about 10 years of experience and I've worked at companies such as Wells Fargo, Eventbrite, and Google. And I attended college just right here in the Bay Area at UC Berkeley. So go Bears. Today, we're gonna to be discussing the question of how does Uber's payment risk team use analytics to detect fraud? Basically what we do is we have analytics that empower our dashboards. And so when there is a loss, we immediately observe these loss trends. We then look at what is going on in our system. We find the problem, and then we come up with solutions by collaborating with engineers. We then roll out the solutions, monitor those solutions, and we see that those solutions generally have very good impact and stop the fraudsters from attacking us. However, these fraudsters are very smart, very technologically advanced, and really enjoy the work that they do. And so they adapt, and then the cycle starts all over again. So I'm going to demonstrate this by speaking about a specific use case, and I'm going to walk you through a demo. So my story starts with a rider who is looking for a discounted trip. Essentially, think of it as a black market for Uber rides exists, and it exists on these online forums. So what you're looking at is two message boards. One of them is in Mandarin. One of them is in Russian. And these message boards are essentially advertising discounted rides. So the riders will reach out to the fraudsters. The rider starts off with the white little text bubble on some kind of chat client, such as WeChat, and they'll say to the fraudster, hey, I want a discounted ride. I saw your advertisement on the message board. I'm going from starting point A to starting point B. The fraudster, refer to the image on the right, the fraudster types in the start location and the end location and dispatches the ride. As soon as the fraudster has dispatched the ride, the fraudster then gets to see what driver will be sent to the rider. So the fraudster will text the rider an image and, uh, of the car and the driver's license plate and name. The rider will come outside, get in the car. As soon as the rider is in the car, the rider will pay the fraudster money. So now that you understand the behavior, let's talk about why Uber cares and the financials behind it. So as we mentioned, the rider is paying the fraudster and the fraudster is paying Uber with a stolen credit card. And that's the crux of the issue. And so if you look at this little flow chart, you can see that the rider requests the discounted ride on WeChat. The rider sends the fraudster the pickup info. The fraudster inserts that info into the Uber app. The trip starts and immediately the rider gets into the car and immediately pays the fraudster. The fraudster, if they don't receive payment, they'll cancel the ride because remember, they're the ones who are in control of the ride. And then the fraudster will pay with the stolen card and Uber will face chargeback disputes. And so what that means is if you've ever looked at your credit card statement and you've had a charge that you didn't remember or didn't make, you can contact your bank and you can file a dispute with your bank. Your bank will give you back the funds, but then your bank will come after the merchant and request those funds. And so Uber is out the full cost of the ride, which in this case costs more than $20. Let's assume it costs 60. So how do we stop this behavior to make sure that we're not out the money? Well, if you look, you can see an example case of a user's account and you can see all the trips on that account. You can see that there's a high trip velocity and the users are impossibly teleporting. No user can be in New York, in London, and in Manchester, 
all within a few hours from each other. So we know that these writers and these accounts are doing something fishy. If we look at those same accounts, we can see that that, that one account is related by credit card to other users. And we can see those other users' emails and names, and we can see that they're gibberish. They're just random letters. The fraudster is just hitting the keyboard or using some kind of program to script an attack. I'd also like to point your attention to the mobile phone number. You can see they all start with 852 and the same four, digit, um, four digits. And so we know those phone numbers track to Hong Kong. And then finally, I'd like to point your attention to the high account creation velocity. You can see that all of these accounts are being created just seconds apart from one another. We, uh, this is a slide of a geolocation of the account creation. Notice that this is not exactly a square, and the spacing is actually also in a square-like grid format if you refer to the top left of the graph. Also important to notice, if you look at the bottom right, some accounts are being created in the water, right? No one's out creating accounts on boats. That just doesn't happen. So we know that bots are actually creating these accounts. So we use analytics to gather all this information. We look at the data and we look at trends. And so when we looked at this specific group of users that were causing us loss, we noticed that a lot of the accounts were using mobile phone numbers from Asia. So you can see the account phone numbers tracked to Hong Kong, the Philippines, and Burma. What was interesting is that those same group of users were taking trips in places outside of Asia. They were taking trips in the United States, in Canada, and in Europe, in large metropolitan cities such as London, New York, DC, and something just didn't add up, right? And so what do we do? How do we detect and how do we stop? So if you think of a user's um, life, life cycle as they go through our app, there's different flows and we get different information. So at account creation, we get information such as the user's phone number, or the user's IP, where they're standing when they're creating the account. Later on they go, they add a credit card. Then we get the location of where they bank, because they're generally adding a credit card number, and the first six digits of the credit card number map to a physical bank location. As they continue through the flow, they then request a trip. When they're requesting a trip, we know the location of where they are requesting from, and we know the IP of where their phone is pinging. So we use these signals in a rules engine. And the rules engine is generally an if this, then that statement. So in this example, we could write a rule saying, if your account creation has a geolocation or an IP address from China, then don't dispatch. Of course, we would never write a rule like that because it would catch too many false positives and innocent users would not be able to ride. We do not want to harm the business. And so instead, we leverage thousands of features and we write much more sophisticated rules. Our rules uh, go through a very strict QA process with engineers and analysts collaborating together. And then we reach a very high threshold and a high precision where we make sure that we're impacting the users that we want to impact. This empowers us to protect the business, but still provide our users with a good user experience. So when we roll out these rules, we monitor them. What you're looking at is an example of a graph of a rule firing on a specific rule. So you can see that when we push out a rule, the, the, on the left side of the graph, we're monitoring how many times it hits every hour. And when we originally push out the rule, in this case, let's assume, if IP China, then don't dispatch. We're seeing all the times the rule is hitting fraudsters um, dispatching rides from China. But then when the fraudster realizes that our rules are catching them, they adapt their behavior. And now their geolocation potentially is 
out of Romania. And they no longer get hit by our rules. And then you can see on the yellow part of the graph, there is uh, no rule fires because the rule is no longer triggered. So really quickly, I want to impart the key takeaways here. Using analytics can empower your team to make very good decisions to support your users and to grow your business. At Uber, we use analytics on the payment risk side, and I showed you one case study. But you can also use analytics via, um, you know, to empower your customer support and your marketing teams and other such teams. Thank you guys very much for listening and I'm available for any questions. Also, quick shout out to my team who's amazing and does great work. Go, go Risk Analytics and Risk Engineering. And also we're hiring, so thank you, bye.